Round 8 of the YouTuber League has come and gone, so it's time to light that pyre and enjoy some bone crunching mayhem as the weekly recap begins now. Welcome back everyone. With us now over the hurdle that is the halfway point for the regular season, means our matches to come are going to be far more vicious and a lot more bloodier, with nearly every team having their key kill pieces all established now with the mightiest of blows, or even others with deadly claws to shred down their competition. I am so eager to bring to you what is to come as we progress further through the season. So without further ado, let's get started with this week's recap. That's right, I, uh, I, I got an elf zombie. Here, you can hurt him. Starting off our week is the Reichlin All Elite versus Omega Eta Alpha, as the undead continue to steal the spotlight every week thus far. And with both their mummies now having block, there is certainly good reason for it too. But if our match last week was any indication against how not to contain lizards, Reichland should have an easy time avoiding the mighty undead pillars this week. Which is exactly what they did after a quick passing play over a jungle boy sees the human team in phenomenal position to score with an easy screen behind the undead horde. Omega Alpha slowly shambles their way forward to intercept the runner but there was little the zombies and ghouls could do but forfeit the touchdown as Reichland simply stalls out the clock before finally being forced to score going into the second half. After a very lackluster first half, with only a single lasting injury so far, both teams were still 11 players strong for the next kickoff. But with it now the undead team's offensive half, the fans were going to finally see some blood and more of the infamous undead elf ball handling. For after baiting the human runners to the side of the field, Bones Malone and Frank the Tank set up the, to rush the ball down the other side of the pitch. The undead marvel that is their passing skills is another success, but they didn't account for the tenacity of the dodging linemen, who are able to respond and take down Frank. The ball was now clearly in Reichland's field as they quickly pass it up for a solid 2-0 lead, but not before Omega Alpha saw to it personally to ruin the career of Miro by inflicting a serious concussion. The Undead Horde continued to rampage onto the fallen players before the game ends with the All Elite's victory, keeping them up in the top 3 spots for this week. For our next match, with the Bright Wings versus the Grey's Cage, no feed was live to witness this match, only for the sole reason that it was a very bloodless game, where the only injury in this match was caused by the elves of all people. Regardless, the cage still managed to demolish the fallen tiers, 0-2, with both the werewolves enjoying a nice helping of star player points to feed them going into round 9's match. Roll with block. Strength of goblin with claw on the line. It's a murder piece right there. Yeah, but he's not going to stay there because I know if I, you'll probably kill him, so... Off nah, you. me! Um, I wouldn't do that. I don't know, I've heard that I've heard that one before. Now, moving on to the Jailhouse Rockers going up against the Nuclear Winters. And while they are not the most violent of teams, the tricky tactics of the underworld hiring Nabla is sure to rile up the crowds, and with a daring blitz putting all the players into the line of scrimmage, you couldn't ask for a better brawl. The brawl however didn't last long, for the Dark Elves were far more efficient at thinning the scaven of their numbers, while surrounding Thrower Blackmail, who was somehow able to pry the ball away from the Elves. With the only option a Hail Mary throw, the Winter quickly reclaimed their prize ball before taking full control of the pitch and taking a 0-1 lead before the second half. Unless you're going to foul him. No. I'm going to score. It's turn 8. And I want to make sure Novelar is not used in the second half. 
With two players down to the elves, the Rockers have their work cut out for them if they wish to secure a tie for this match. And with first degree, completely clueless on what he was supposed to do for the drive, opens up a massive window for the Winters to steal the spotlight yet again. Pressing in on the back line, it seemed victory was there for a nuclear Winters taking, which once again prompted the Rockers to attempt a Hail Mary play. No way. What the f fuck? Okay. The game is on. While the pass may have been successful, First Degree was still clueless that he was supposed to catch the ball as part of the game plan, serving ultimately at only inconveniencing the Elves as a quick recovery and touchdown by Elsa nearly secures a victory for the team. Ever desperate to get on the board finally, the Rockers attempt to throw Juvenile behind the Elven lines. But once more, the lack of coordination shows itself once again, as it's instead the Goblins and Skaven who have forgotten the game plan. In a bizarre spectacle, we instead see Juvenile attempt a very unique form of hit and run play. You're gonna throw him to safety. No! <laughs> oh, you didn't kill him! Throw him away! Oh my god, that was beautiful. That was fantastic. Thanks for that. Well, he is safe from being killed now. The milestone of being the only goblin to be thrown the wrong way was, alas, the only achievement the Underworld team would get this day, as the elves overwhelmed their lines once more to secure a final 0-3 score by the end of the match. Moving back into a much more bashy type of game, we have How Not to Contain Lizards versus the Mini Sons of Anarchy. With the dwarves having to punch above their own weight for a change, we will see if they have what it takes to pull off a victory. However, with the lizards gaining the offensive drive, they aim for a very fast touchdown, utilizing Catalina's speed while attempting to quickly dispose of JT in the process. It took a little setting up, but with the risk of the death roller rampaging its way through their lines, Tesla Niki felt the pass was the only way to keep from taking too much damage to the team. With the successful touchdown, JT's reign of terror was finally put to rest, for now at least. The lizards were fully prepared for the dwarves on the next kickoff, placing themselves perfectly to blunt their momentum as the ball is soaring high up in the air. But the stubbornness of the dwarves is legendary in all of history, and it surely shows, for despite the perfect defense, the lizards were soundly put in their place. However, the dwarf short-sightedness is also legendary, as the ball promptly gets surrounded by a tide of hungry lizards. Taking a note from Tesla Niki earlier, they hail Mary the ball across the field, but as per last week, forgot to have an R player on the other side of the pass. With the dwarves surrounded once again, nothing stopped the skinks from eventually securing their second touchdown at the match, going into the halftime. But it didn't stop the Sons of Anarchy from putting up a fight still, as they effectively end the career of Soros Aurora. Both teams are down to 9 players for the next kickoff, but it was still going to be a long half for the dwarves with how easily they were overwhelmed so far in this match. It was a brutal half, as the Sons of Anarchy surprisingly get the upper hand on the Lizards, but the Reptilians were happy to return every blow made back to them. And with the Lionosaurus knocked down, the Dwarves were able to make a play through the Lion's scrimmage finally. Once they were behind the Lizard line, they made short work of the Skinks, allowing them to get on the board finally at 2-1. to one. With a victory all but certain for the unrestrained lizards, they still aim to extend their lead for the next kickoff. And even with an early fumbled pickup, the dwarves were back to being punching bags for the high strength brutes, which left Pirate Joe's team with a relatively easy touchdown as they finished off the match with a solid 3-1 victory. 
Full Black Orcs troll. I mean, he's got an edge full blitzer. I mean, that's a pretty good roll. You don't really need a fur at that point. Um. Now it is time for the match everyone's been waiting for as the fluffy green go up against the godlike puns. Both of these teams are evenly matched in their team value, never mind being the highest value teams in the league currently. So you know exactly what to expect as both teams play very aggressively on the kickoff, leaving Yeti and Troll to come to blows. While the Norse started off strong, their lower armor to the orcs became apparent as the greenskins happily returned the favor. The match then quickly snowballed in Fluffy Green's favor as the puns lacked the muscle to follow through with their game plan, forcing a desperate pass to Terrific Doggy and a final hope to score. But with the dreams immediately denied, Fluffy Green secured the ball with plenty of time on the clock to take the 1-0 touchdown going into the second half. Thanks to the heavy amount of reserve players for godlike puns, they were only down two players to Fluffy Green. But the momentum was easily lost regardless for the Norsemen, as the failed offensive drive just drove the Orcs forward with a very oppressive start, dazing nearly every lineman that got between them and victory. With very little going in Malt's way, they were forced to resign to their first loss of the season as Fluffy Green claimed a 2-0 win in a satisfyingly bloody match. Going into our next game, between the Leg Lickers and the Bouncing Warriors, you already know what to expect, for this is almost as one-sided a match as you could possibly get between the teams. With the ladies and their dodging prowess against the blockless Kislev, they ultimately were steamrolled into a 3-0 game to the Leg Lickers, with another fatality to add to their dwindling list of players. Over there. Claw Guy doesn't really matter too fucking much. No. <laughs> Not really. They're for decoration this match. With some more broken players on the horizon, it is time for the Cursed Suffering to go up against the Fragile Blood Marks. With the Dwarves forfeiting the utility of Guard for Mighty Blow, a lot of players are likely going to get knocked off the pitch. With the Sufferer's own Minotaur being the first to go, when their attempt to outmuscle Elves on the kickoff backfires horribly, leaving the team already outnumbered and limping in their power. As they try to recover on the pitch, the Elves take full advantage of this good fortune, wedging an opening on the sidelines for them before going for a quick touchdown. With still plenty of time in the half for the dwarves to equalize, they attempt just that, while taking out any elf that dares to get in their way. Just barely within reach of the end zone, near the end of the first half, disaster strikes before Dalinar could make an attempt to dodge through the elf lines, leaving the blood marks with the advantage going into the second half. For the next kickoff, if you have had doubts that the Cursed Suffering had fans, they arrived in full force, quite literally, as they bull rushed down the majority of the blood marks. Setting up the Chaos Dwarves for a very quick equalization of the match, with some much needed injuries included on the side. Fearing for being bogged down by the Dwarves, Gladiator sets up his team for their trademark two-turn sideline push, trusting that they can slow down the doors on the defensive to secure a win. And even with the sufferers anticipating this formation, thanks to the absurd strength of paper, he not only managed to punch a hole in their formation, but also putting a hole through Dalinar in the process. Thanks to the distraction of the Dying Bull Centaur, the rest of the elves managed to get behind the dwarves, securing their flawless execution of the two-turn score. This of course left plenty of time in the second half for the Cursed Suffering, as a touchdown on the kickoff makes the likeliness of a tie all the more real. With an additional injury on the field, bringing the elves to eight players, it all came down to how Roger's team could keep the ball secure, 
and with papers still on the field, it made that prospect very difficult to do, which prompted a desperate pass to Dalinar, where a successful catch would secure a tie game. But alas, with it failing, the blood marks would instead secure their victory with a 1-2 win. Small and... Man, the snotlings I don't fucking care about. You can kill them as much as you want. I just don't want ogres to die. Well, that's the... Well, my plan is to kill them, so... Yeah. Yeah, and your team is pretty good at it. Hmm. For our final match of the week, we have the brand new Large Legends going up against the Outworn Ideas. When nearly half of the players on the field are strength 5 behemoths, you don't need me to tell you what to expect for this match, as immediately the fight escalates into a full-on brawl for the ball. At Warren Ideas has gotten the crazy idea of letting the Tomb Guards carry the ball for this match, but when you're dealing with Brick Fart and four other ogres, that strategy doesn't last very long. Well, it was a gamble, but it's a gamble that paid off. <laughs> oh my god, it happened again! No! Come on! That bounced out of two ogres' hands into the Tomb Guardians! But the Camry are determined to get that Tomb Guard touchdown, regardless of what anyone thinks. And eventually, their persistence will eventually cost them, of nearly all of their big guys, as one by one, they fall off the pitch, allowing the ogre team to steal the ball. With Brick Farf's impressive discipline in the middle of the brawl, the Legends are able to get the Rolling Squibs out to safety to secure their first touchdown of the season, putting the bosses of Sauces to shame. Well, this team got their first touchdown much faster than the other one. <laughs> Only the large Legends were down a player for a second half, but in all honesty, the match was the least interesting thing for everyone, for when Grotti fails to stick his landing, for a quick 2-0 lead, the rest of the half basically became a game of who could claim the ball, as it repeatedly wanders across the field, looking for end zone to call it home. It kept bouncing around, looking for one worthy to carry it to its glorious home, but alas, none were chosen for the task before them. You know where this tomb guardian's going? On the ball. On the ball. <laughs> Do you know where he's going? I can take a guess. <laughs> For a moment there, I really thought we were going to see the third Tomb Guardian hot potato catch. The ball kept searching, with many more players daring to raise the ball up high in triumph. That's not a good thing. You know what? Fuck it! What is this fucking clown show? That's what finally catches the ball! <laughs> <laughs> Surfing across the Nobbler corpse! At long last, after nearly the entire half was spent in awe of the wandering ball, this is a momentous occasion where the mighty ball was raised up for all the crowd to see, and... We're back where we started. <laughs> we are back. You have no idea the lengths I'll go to keep that ball out of your hands and make you have to keep picking it up. <laughs> Alas, perhaps it was never meant to be, as the game ultimately ends 1-0 for the large legends, giving us an experience we will never forget. That brings us to an end to this recap. With the only change to our top 4 standings is Reichlin has reclaimed their number 1 spot on top with the loss that the godlike puns were dealt with this week. How not to contain lizards and the leglickers are still battling out for third so far, 
but it's only a matter of time until the battle comes to an end as we move into round 9 of the season, starting off once again with Omega Eta Alpha facing off against the Jailhouse Rockers. The Rockers are truly having a difficult time in the season now, for so much of their potential comes down to the blitzers and throwers to carry the team onward. But while Juvenile can do most of the work himself, he is only but one goblin, and the rest of the team may not last very long against the impressive mummies. Match 2 is how not to contain lizards versus the bright wings, and while the lizards should have fun stomping the elves, with only a single source having block, they may have some difficulty keeping them down, especially if the bright wings start to learn how to hunt down the skinks. Match 3 is Fluffy Green versus the Reichland All Elite, the good old classic orcs versus humans, and both teams are very formidable at that, with CM Punk leading the charge. Anything can happen in this match, so make sure you tune in for it. Match 4 is the Leg Lickers versus the Greatest Cage, and with Caveman making his return after sorting Clan Pestilin of their blight, the Amazons have arguably never been stronger right now. Even the werewolves will have difficulty taking these ladies down with them not relying on their armor. Match 5 is the Cursed Suffering versus the Nuclear Winters, which very much is a similar situation the dwarves have had to do for their last match against the Bloodmarks, where the sufferers have the power to cripple the elves over time. But with now their Minotaur out for this match, and their only guard player also being their Mighty Blow Killer, they'll need a solid defense if they want to achieve victory. Match 6 is the Large Legends versus the Mini Sons of Anarchy. The dwarves were already drooling at the prospect of killing some snotlings, and with the power of their troll slayers, putting the ogres into place is not going to be difficult either. But all it takes is one wrong move for the dwarves to suffer in this match against the giant brutes. Match 7 is the Outworn Ideas versus the Godlike Puns. With the Norse suffering heavily after their last match, they are most likely relieved to face a team just as fragile as they are. But with their Yeti out for this week, the Tomb Guards could very well run rampant on the field if the casualties start mounting. Finally, for Match 8, it's the Fragile Bloodmarks versus the Bouncing Warriors. Their match won't be as violent as the fans may want, but it's without a doubt going to be a sweeping victory for the Elves. They may be missing multiple players for this match, but Face is probably the only player they really need. The future is looking bright for the season, going down in history for all the ridiculous plays we've seen so far, and for mounting ever more skulls on the Blood Bowl pitch. Thank you everyone for watching, and have a good night.